Nigerians are wondering what will happen after the elections as we usher in a new government headed by the incumbent, Muhammadu Buhari. The big question now is what next? Elections are over, campaigns are over, all the partings are over. Will Nigeria get back to work? On this episode of the show, my guest will be sharing with us what he expects the new government to do that will change the face of Nigeria's economy. Welcome to the show. I am Itogi Mo Edit. My guest today is a development economist and the chairman, executive chairman, Pan Africa Development Corporate Company, and the person of Mr. Odilim Nwegbara. Thank you so much for coming on the show, sir. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you. Thank you. Let's start with the 2019 budget. I mean, this has been dragging for so long. Are we going to see an accelerated uh, hearing and, and subsequent uh, passage before the new uh, assembly? I think so. Reason being that. Um that you see that APC has gotten a, a majority in the Senate and in the House. So they will push for the accelerated uh, uh, passage of the budget because as a way to impress uh, Buhari and mm. uh, his incoming government. But do you see any further increase in the, in the monetary, uh, the figures we have currently in the budget? I mean, since it's going to be an, an all APC-led uh, National Assembly. The problem we have with the budget is that the budget is uh, actually going to be deficit driven, a lot of deficits. So government is going to borrow a lot of money. But you know, our debt, our debt is growing, our, our domestic debt actually that had been used for servicing for, for budget has been so much that um, our debt to revenue ratio has grown to 69%. Oh, so by the time we add uh, more burden on the on the on the on the, on the, on the fiscal the fiscal body it mm. means that we are growing to such a dangerous position of up to 80 percent yeah. which is very dangerous because most countries maximum debt to gdp ratio is actually um not more than 30 uh, percent you know okay. that's debt to, to 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 revenue ratio sorry not debt to revenue ratio is is growing in a way because our our domestic debt is actually very expensive and because it's very expensive it uh, costs a lot to service it so the the, 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 the the cost of servicing our domestic debt is too much and so i don't know where they're going to get the money to 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 to, to finance our deficit that's, oh. the, that, that's the problem oh. well sir as an uh, a development economist what three policies would you want this new government to look at first we have to reform our fiscal policy uh, uh, move from uh, fiscal pro prudence to fiscal expansionary so that that will be more focused on growth, pro growth of uh, fiscal policy making, pro jobs and pro investment. Okay. We must do that. But for us to do that, we also have to reform the CBN so that we make CBN to become also uh, uh, stop money, uh, 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 monetary tightening, that is uh, liquidity tightening, uh. and the go into increasing liquidity in the system. Not minding that it's going to lead to inflation, but this that what I, is I called, just about that what that, is called yeah. heady inflation because mm. you have no option. But when you are developing your economy, yeah. you have to grow infrastructure. And for you to grow infrastructure, you have to actually put liquidity in the system. How they are going to do it, I don't know. But we are already dead in a debt trap. I think one of the actions the CBN has to do is to buy back our debt. CBN can buy back our debt okay. using quantitative easing. Because if not, we get to the point we cannot even service the debt. So C C the, the CBN has mm -hmm. to be reformed and move his, uh, monetary policy making, leave it to CBN. But now the supervision and the, 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 the regulation of the banking sector, mm -hmm. uh, uh, especially the commercial bank, has to be a new agency called Nigerian Banking Regulatory Commission. So the CBN will focus on monetary policy, and this agency will focus on ensuring that child practices are no longer allowed in the banking, mm. in the commercial, by Sector. commercial banks and other banks, yeah. yes. Number two point, sir. Next is that I want the government to actually ensure that we invest a lot in the small business, because all over the world, mm. what drives modern economy is small business. Yeah. Uh, we must invest in small business, but we cannot invest in small business if we do not create a, 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 a funding, a soft funding uh, system that will allow small business to get cheap fund and assess it as quickly as possible. But also, we must make sure that the goods that can be made in Nigeria should 
should no longer be important into the country mm. because it, it's of no use when you give people money to produce small goods and those goods still flood the system mm. and they displace the small business that are producing yeah, them. So we well. must find a yeah. way to make it difficult for those goods that could be made locally not to be important. Mm. By the way, lots of um, hype and, and publicity about the economic recovery and growth plan. Um, how do you see that playing out as, as uh, we move into the new administration? You know, you cannot get something from nothing. I'm a friend of the, uh, of the uh, economic uh, 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 recovery and growth plan. Yeah. Uh, they are my friends. Yeah. The, those people working there are my friends. Uh, the doctor, I've forgotten his name right now, but uh, they are my friends. The problem is that it's a small office that is in the Ministry of Trade and uh, Ministry of Planning, yes. uh, uh, Budget and Planning. But they do not have the capacity to even go into restructuring the, 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 the economy because actually they are only trying to help the, the, the budget side of the economy. Mm -hmm. But their input is, is not as effective as it's supposed to be because the real problem has to be dealing with our budgeting and those who dealing with our fiscal policy. So, uh, they are just adding little value here and there, but they are, they are not actually the drivers of the, of the type of economic change I want us to have. Mm -hmm. Inflation is a little above 11 percent, and um, uh, there's so much excitement from the civil service about a new minimum wage. How do you relate to that? Do you think that will grow in inflation? There's also the case that uh, there may be a possible increase in, in the VAT. South African VAT is uh, about uh, about 14 or 15 percent. Mm. Go and find out. Nigerian VAT is 5 percent. How can we want to grow an economy? And South Africa is a modern economy. It's a modern industrial economy with modern infrastructure. Mm. We don't have modern infrastructure. We don't have modern economy. Why should South Africa be imposing about 15 percent VAT on all consumables and we're imposing only 5 percent? We must. I agree. I am one of those saying that our VAT must be increased to at least 15 percent but also luxury goods must mm. be up to 50 percent luxury goods like those who want to have private jets mm. who want to have yachts those who want to you know fly first class they must pay because if you if you want to enjoy you have to pay for for, for your enjoyment mm. so that the poor and those who are trapped in the in the mm. poverty mm. 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 line yeah could also be helped to come out of the poverty lifted lifted out of the poverty so what i'm saying in essence is the problem is not inflation being single digit or double digit because you cannot help it because the economy is actually vertically driven. So you should expect a lot of massive importation that will always drive our, 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 our forex. Mm. And if actually put less pre a lot of pressure on our forex, it will affect our, our, our currency. So it's not easy to say we have to, and the monetary tightening, it will not help the country. So what I'm saying is that- That should be must, losing. Monetary tightening should be losing. By exactly, CBS. exactly. Because monetary tightening is austerity. It's, it's a monetary uh, austerity. Mm -hmm. How can you reduce a, a, a liquidity in the system? And I still want to grow the economy. Mm -hmm. We must flood the system with liquidity. It doesn't matter if the inflation rate is 20 or 25%. Mm -hmm. But what is important is that we're investing in the, in the real economy by making sure that money is made available to those who need it. Let me tell you, for example, yeah. I, I used to uh, produce cashew nuts. It is 100% locally made. So if you give me 100 million to produce cashew nuts, of course I will, uh, I will spend the money domestically. Mm. And the, even if inflation is high, not yeah. everybody is affected by inflation because there are so many farmers who don't know what inflation is all about. <laughs> so, so when we Certainly. talk about this inflation, we're talking about the elite class that actually needs a lot of forex to go overseas to do their health issues and to buy things that the, the consumables they, mm. they, they enjoy. We are subsidizing imports. Each time we, we actually uh, 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 try to uh, uh, put a lot of dollars in the system in order to reduce so-called inflation, because inflation is a function of the value of Naira versus yeah, the dollar. Exactly. And then you subsidize import. And when you subsidize import, you make importation uh, uh, cheaper and the local production more expensive. This is the truth. And Nigerians must know this. Well, sir, just before I let you go, what uh, economic reform do you think Nigeria really needs right now? The first and the, 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 the most important is that we tell ourselves that we must restructure. We must restructure and fiscal federalism. You know, why we are where we are today is because the center is too powerful and the peripheries are just spectators, economic spectators. Uh, uh. Allow the states to take care of their 
like, uh, 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 take care of their businesses. The answer, mind their businesses. When they have a need for the center, they go to the center. Center will be formulating national economic policy, fiscal and monetary policy, and security policies and things. But, and but allow but the states to. There are issues with the restructuring because some say the states are not equal. Others are stronger than, than some states. Especially they merge. The they merge. They merge. It's not a must that some military people sat down and created states as they wished mm. without looking into the, into the viability yeah. of those states. Yeah. Now, states that cannot stand on their own will merge. Uh, companies merge. <laughs> no, no, it's not a laughing matter. You know, the problem in Nigeria is that we laugh over serious matters. But, but that, that may not happen, which you know, sir. I mean, if I don't care if it country, happens, it doesn't state. happen. It is up to us to do things right. Look at South Africa. South Africa is the modern economy. If you go to South Africa, you, you see a modern industrial economy. And the South Africa is booming. And we're here talking about things we would have solved. Th By the way, until 1966, Nigeria was. A fiscally, that was fiscal union. What I mean by fiscal union is that nature, the regions are independent. That's fiscal federalism. So regions are independent physically. They only contribute 10 50 percent to the center, and they were working hard to to sustain themselves. But today, everybody is. Waiting for the center to bring in money made by other other states because Lagos is making a lot of money, yes. River State is making a lot of money, Kanu is making a lot of money, Gombe State, uh, Jigawa State, and uh, just name all those states are just sitting down there, Zamfara, and they name them are sitting down there for the money to come to the center and they share it. So why should I work hard for you to to share my my wealth and distribute it around? We must come to the to the level and agree. And I will tell you, if we restructure, yeah. restructure is not actually state restructure. I'm talking. About. I'm talking about regional restructuring, so that the six regions can become micro economies and decide what they want to do. If they want to go into agriculture, they go into. If they want to go into industrialization, they go into. If they want to go into IT development, yes. they go into. And you take advantage of what you can produce, and the and the return your cash. And they give what you have to give to the state, to the, to the center, to the center. So everybody mind their business. Indeed. Well, my guest has been development economist and, and the executive chairman of an Africa Development Corporate Company, uh, Mr. Odile Megbar. And we have been uh, talking, what next, Nigeria? Thank you so much for your time. Thank and you. And we appreciate uh, Thank the you time. For all right, join us next time as we look at what Nigeria will be doing next. I am Itogi Moiden. Thank you for watching.